Wait for it. Hold on. Oh, my God. I need, like, a ton of these today. I stayed up last night watching the outcome of the Breonna Taylor verdict. All those peaceful protests, right? It's an amazing, beautiful thing. There's a lot of unity, a lot of harmony in the streets. And uh, it was just great for our democracy, to be honest with you. But in the course of watching this, I see these, this one particular video that stands out to me. And it got me thinking about situational awareness. And it got me thinking a little bit on maybe some ways that you can avoid getting caught in one of these you know, mostly peaceful protest. So let's talk about that. Maybe one, two, three ways you can avoid getting caught in the middle of civil unrest. Let's go. So let me ask you guys an honest question. What happens, what runs through your mind when you hear about a verdict coming out for a cop-involved shooting, right? There has been some sort of police, police officer who has shot some sort of innocent person just because they're a white supremacist and just because that person is an opposite skin color. What's the first thing that usually goes through your mind, right? It probably wouldn't be, let's go downtown in the major city where we live and go out to eat, right? Maybe not a good idea, but that's what got me thinking about this whole concept of how can you avoid these peaceful protests because in this video you see here these people are out to eat or they're having a few drinks i'm not quite sure what's going on they're just hanging out right and the mob comes up the street this dude swaggers over he sits down the woman actually stands up tries to do something and then backs down and it looks like her man or date or whoever that dude is is a little confused on what to do he gets up he wants to leave then he stays there and as i watch this i'm like how do you get caught in that situation right so the number one Lack of situational awareness. Anybody in their right mind would have known to stay away from the downtown area of the major city that they lived in. In this case, St. Petersburg. So, you know, I mean, last night, you know, it's been pretty quiet in Jacksonville, but um, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out you might not want to go out to eat, right? Something might happen. So you want to avoid downtown. And generally speaking, don't you usually avoid downtown of major cities after dark? Common sense. So um, that being what it is, Number one, situational awareness. Be aware of the world around you and don't run around with blinders on, right? Because, yeah, in this situation here, guys, they look like total clowns. And it's hard to take them seriously. I mean, I, 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 you know, aside from it pissing me off, I wouldn't feel like I needed to start blasting everybody. But you look around at that crowd. That dude who took that seat at the table, I'd be eyeballing the hell out of him for one thing because he's got that skateboard and he might try to hit me or my date or whoever that person I am I'm there with, right? Um, I would be scanning the area and I definitely want to be seated, right? Because people can circle around behind you. So the whole situation is absolutely avoidable if you just know what the hell is going on around you, all right? Number two way to avoid civil unrest, and this is a big one that I had to figure out the hard way, is the fact that uh, just don't go to the peaceful protest, right? There's no reason for you to go. And I can't believe I'm saying this because I was engaged in a lot of um, political activism, for lack of a better term, right? And uh, there was definitely violence involved as well. But the thing was, is nobody was dying, nobody was getting shot. And uh, the whole game changed, right? We have escalated in another level in this civil war. I mean, you gotta really admit, we basically have a civil war going on here. So um, in that instance, I kind of lost my um, desire and drive to go to these events, right? It's just not worth it, right? I would rather stay alive and uh, be able to take care of the ones around me, right? And um, yeah, maybe be able to hang around a little bit longer until the, all the shooting breaks out, and then you can have some fun. So don't go off and die too early. So avoid the peaceful protest. There's no reason for you to go. That's number two. And then number three, let's think about a situation where, you know, in many instances, I have worked downtown in a major city. Actually, I worked downtown in Louisville. And if I was at work one day and I knew that there was going to be some sort of verdict announced at 2, 3 o'clock on a Wednesday, I would either have not come into work or I would have left very early that morning. Actually, I probably wouldn't even come into work because they start setting up and staging for a protest hours and hours in advance, right? So you probably just want to avoid the area 100%, right? Or if you do happen to get caught and something, you know, pops off and you, um, you didn't expect it or anything like that at all and it was more random in nature, then just stay inside your office. You know, maybe it's not a good idea, especially when the protest is getting more and more peaceful, to try and jump in your car and leave. And I saw some videos where people were trying to do that. And uh, at that point in time, man, you got to um, you got to put the pedal to the metal and get the hell out of there. And you're probably gonna run over somebody in the process. You know, it might be a little bump in the road. It is what it is. You know, these you know these people are peaceful. And I'm sure everything will be okay in the end. So um, that's number three. And then 
I guess maybe we can tack another one on there because maybe you have to like be working at that time delivering something. You know, there was that one thing with that Uber Eats driver who got caught in the middle of a confrontation. I can't remember if that was a dude who got out of his car with a gun and blasted a couple of people, but you know, that type of situation, you better damn well be prepared and have the tools on hand needed to actually defend yourself from an immediate threat. So in my mind, guys, those are a few ways to avoid getting caught in the middle of one of these peaceful protests. And honestly, guys, I think for the majority of us, it's pretty easy to avoid this. Now, that's all under the assumption that these these uh, these peaceful people stay, you know, contained to the downtown areas, which is not the case anymore. Okay, they've gone up and escalated another stage in their insurgency. And the and this is textbook. This is man. This is literally textbook uh, military actions that they're taking. But now they're tar now they're targeting the suburbs. Okay. And this is no surprise, you know, uh, this, you know, these people, you know, they had a bunch of uh, Trump stuff out, right? And their house gets attacked and firebombed. Okay, what does that mean to you? Does that mean you stop flying your Trump flag or you, do you give them a big middle finger and you keep flying that flag and set up and wait for them to try and take it? So um, it's escalating. They're moving into the suburbs and their last stop will be in rural areas. But I think I see a future where this just continues to spread. So... As survivalists and as preppers, we are very much concerned about our survival factor and our survival timeline. So for me personally, I don't know about you, I'm going to avoid the peaceful protests. And if, you know, by whatever crazy chance I do get caught in something like that, I'm going to be freaking ready and prepared to defend myself and also use common sense in the process. You see in that video that it did appear that the mob just moved on after they, you know, didn't get a reaction. Um, so that being what it is guys, I hope you enjoyed the video hit me up down there in the comments and tell me how you would handle Being in the middle of one of those peaceful protests and let's say they get in your face and they try some of their um, Chinese communist tactics. They want you to raise uh, your fist. They want you to pledge allegiance and support to BLM How does that go down in your head? I'll see you in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Peace support for the channel by checking out the wide range of survival gear available at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We stock only top quality, rugged, tactical equipment and apparel designed to support any mission or situation life may throw your way. Any gear you've seen in this video is linked up down there in the pin post and be sure to check out the suggested videos for more real world survival content and training.